So uh, continuing now, uh, after we've added all the arguments, we now go ahead and actually execute the uh, SQL. And um, uh, if there's an error, then flag um, will be uh, false and we'll send back a, uh, an error message uh, to the uh, client uh, which of course is going to be in the form of a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, a JavaScript uh, statement. Uh, it's important that we uh, call the JS escape function uh, to escape all um, characters that need to be escaped for JavaScript such as the um, uh, single quote uh, needs to be converted to backslash single quote uh, carriage returns need to be converted to backslash n, etc. So that's what this uh, JS escape function does over here. And uh, uh, we then close the uh, connection uh, because there was an error. And uh, finally, uh, if we get to this point in the script, there was no error. So we get to see how many records were inserted. This, of course, should only be one because we did an insert. Uh, and then we send back our message to the browser. Uh, telling us how many rows were inserted. Uh, if you don't want to send back any message to the browser after adding to the transaction table, then you would just set this add transaction to a, uh, a null value. So um, all of the comments here below are the comments that were inserted automatically when we uh, created the functional prototype. And it, uh, the, these comments tell you what's inside this E object over here that uh, gets passed into the Ajax callback and uh, you can see that we're using um, the uh, uh, underbar current row data uh, object that's inside E to get the values of the uh, um, fields from the current row on the Ajax callback and that's all explained over here in the uh, uh, documentation in the function prototype. So uh, this explains how the AJAX uh, callback then goes ahead and adds the new record to the transaction table. Thanks very much.